Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris. In this video, I'll be talking again about seismic waves. In a previous video, I talked about the similarities between echolocation in animals such as dolphins and bats, and seismic waves propagating through the Earth. Now, a big difference between echolocation and seismics is that waves through the Earth are both partially reflected and partially transmitted. This gives seismic waves the ability to reflect off multiple geological contacts within the Earth. Let's have a closer look. Here we go. The first is near-surface explosive sources. Rewind. Man, I didn't know those self-propelled drills could do that. Anyway, we set off the source and the spreading waves go down. At each geological contact, some of the wave is reflected and some of the wave is transmitted. The direct wave and the reflections are picked up at our ear on the ground or geophone. Another way to think about waves is in terms of rays moving directly between two points. In the case of seismic, the ray goes from an explosive source to an interface and reflects back again. Think in waves, but use rays. In this case, we can see the rays associated with each interface. My wave speed is of course not to scale as this process could actually take milliseconds to complete. With a geophone listening, we can observe the returning waves, in this case in real time. For this example, we are going to say there is zero offset between the geophone and the source. The resulting seismic trace has several basic features. First is the point where the explosion was set off. This is zero time or the time break. Followed by the first break, which is the first wave to arrive at the geophone. And the remaining reflectors, which have traveled two ways, from source to reflector and back. Due to spreading loss and attenuation through the Earth, the reflected waves weaken over distance and time. We end up with zero offset reflections, which represent geological contacts in time. If we move the single shot and single geophone several times, multiple zero offset traces can be recorded. Horizontal scale is in distance along the surface. In early years, this distance was measured in cubits, or furlongs, or sometimes the dreaded cat -o tails which required hundreds of cats to be lined up snout to tail for measurement. As you could imagine, this was quite a lengthy process and annoyed the cats. Horizontal scale is distance along the surface in meters. Its vertical scale, however, is in time, in seconds or milliseconds, depending on the depth. We mute the first break because in this case it tells us nothing about the reflections. We can now interpret a geological section in time from the seismic data, noting again the reflected waves have traveled two ways from source to reflector and back. Now, of course, multiple zero offset sources and receivers is just plain silly. So, we slam a few more geophones on the ground and leave the rest to another video. To recap, using an explosive source, we can send sound waves through the Earth. The waves are both partially reflected at contacts within the Earth, as well as partially transmitted. The reflections are picked up by geophones as wiggles and turned into seismic traces. These wiggles can then be interpreted as layering within the Earth. This gives us a geological section in time. Now, I only talked about the zero offset case, that means more videos to come. If you like my video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, add me to your LinkedIn, or even better, share my videos through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris, and keep rocking.
archaeological contents, contacts within the earth. Let's have a closer look, and here we go. Beer, beer, beer. Oh, that's beer. Beer, beer, beer. That is not beer. Not beer is over here.